Next to Syria, where at least 89 people have been killed in a drone attack on a crowded military graduation ceremony. It happened Thursday in the central city of Homs and is the Civil War's deadliest single attack in years. At least five children are among those killed and more than 275 other people are wounded. No group immediately claimed responsibility, but the military is blaming insurgents and the attack likely to prompt a wave of violence in Syria's opposition held north. Dr. Haid Haid is a Syrian columnist and a consulting fellow with the Middle East and North Africa program at the think tank Chatham House. He joins us now. Thank you so much. I want to start by just asking how rare is it to see weaponized drones used this way in Syria? Well, we have throughout, first of all, thank you for having me. We have uh, seen throughout the conflict, especially in the past few years, different groups using drones to uh, attack uh, uh, facilities behind enemy lines. Uh, but this is the first time that we have seen a drone that attacks a facility that is very far away from the front lines. We are talking about almost 125 kilometers away, away from that, basically, that, that the front lines with uh, rebel groups in northwest Syria. And groups there, interestingly, don't have the drones that can fly a distance such as this one. So this actually raises different questions as to whom could be the main actors uh, who carried out such attacks, especially that so far, as you mentioned, no one has uh, uh, claimed uh, responsibility for, for the attack. Well, in your expert opinion, then, who could it potentially be? I think different actors could have been. It's, it's, it's quite difficult to uh, speculate right now, because um, if the uh, drones were uh, basically according to the main assumption is that it was uh, carried out from within regime controlled areas because as I said, rebel groups don't have the technology yet to uh, fly long distances, drones for long distances. Then we could basically see many actors involved in this or potentially involved in this, such as ISIS, but also uh, potentially many groups are even blaming uh, regimes affiliated, uh, uh, groups affiliated with the regime for, for, for that attack as well. And what about the timing of this attack? The nation's defense minister had just spoken at a graduation ceremony where the attack took place. Is it safe to assume he was the target? Well, that's that's the assumption. But again, the timing that the attack happened almost 20 minutes to 30 minutes after the, 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 the uh, high official left the position uh, contributed to the speculations that uh, maybe he was not even a target. Maybe this is all a, a plot by the regime or groups affiliated with the regime in order to escalate elsewhere or divert people's attention from the uh, ongoing uh, economic, uh, basically uh, deteriorating economic situation in regime held areas. As we have seen for, for several weeks now, people have been demonstrating, especially in Sueda and region control areas, uh, due to the uh, bad living conditions they're facing there. So how brutally can we expect Assad's government to respond? Well, unfortunately, there's not much to speculate. We have already seen uh, an increase in the um, number of airstrikes and shelling against uh, rebel control areas in northwest Syria. The regime did not only uh, target uh, military uh, bases, but uh, carried also out attacks against uh, civilian residential areas, but also civilian infrastructures, uh, uh, markets, and that has led to the death and injury of, of, of many civilians in, in those areas. So the, the reaction has been uh, strong and has been also used to collectively punish those who live in that area. Although, as said before, there's no uh, direct proof that groups from that region has been that the ones responsible for that time. Dr. Haid Haid uh, from the Ch think tank Chatham House, thank you so much for your time and expertise. Thank you for having me.